Hi everyone. In this lecture, we will try to intuitively arrive at a cascode amplifier structure starting from a common source amplifier. To do this, we will start with the frequency response analysis of a common source amplifier shown here. Now in this analysis, I have considered only the gate to drain parasitic capacitor. I have neglected the other device parasitic capacitors as don't cap those capacitors don't make much of a difference in the analysis. So to begin the analysis, a voltage VI is applied at the gate terminal of this MOS device and is going to generate a current GMVI in response to that. That current when it is pushed into a load resistor, RL is going to generate a voltage of minus GMRL into VI at the drain terminal. Again this is a conventional cascode amplifier, uh, sorry a common source amplifier operation. Now if you look at the voltage across this capacitor CGD, the positive plate is at VI and the negative plate is at a huge negative voltage given by minus GMRL into VI. So the overall voltage developed across the capacitor CGD is 1 plus GMRL into VI. Now you should remember that uh, the voltage across a capacitor cannot change instantaneously. So what I am writing here 1 plus GMRL into VI is the steady state voltage. So there will be some time constant associated with uh, the steady state associated with the capacitor attaining its steady state voltage. And that steady state voltage is 1 plus GMRL into VI. That steady state voltage times CGD gives us the total charge or the steady state charge stored in this capacitor CGD. The question is where does this charge come from? Now one terminal of this capacitor is connected at the input, the other terminal at the output. So obviously from basic Kirchhoff's current law, we can say all the charge has to entirely come from the input. Now previously in the absence of CGD, the input was not delivering any current or charge to the circuit. But now because of the presence of CGD, the input source is actually delivering some charge to the circuit. So the question is now, how is this circuit, this common source amplifier going to look as far as the input is concerned? To do that, I have shown here the capacitor CGD connected between the input and the output terminals. I have only shown that part because that's the, that element, this, uh, the gate to drain capacitor because that's the only element which is connecting both the input and the output. And the steady state charge or the total charge drawn from the input, vol input voltage is simply given by 1 plus mod A into VI into CGD where mod A here is the amplification factor which is GM into RL. So the total charge stored across the capacitor is an amplified version of the input voltage times CGD. Now one can intuitively see that this circuit since the current is flowing through a capacitor there is no DC current flowing in the circuit I mean from the input. So there is no average if I if, if you are asked to find the average current drawn by the circuit from the input it is going to be 0. And we can also see that in the steady state once the capacitor attains a steady state value voltage value there will be no current drawn from the circuit from the input. So from that I can say that the as far as the input is concerned the whole common source amplifier is going to look like one capacitor and I will call that as the equivalent capacitor as CEQ. Now what is the value of the equivalent capacitor? So the equivalent capacitor has to exactly mimic what is happening in the actual circuit. So which means the charge delivered from the input to the capacitor for equivalent capacitor should be same as the charge delivered from the input to the gate to drain capacitor. So I'll, all I need to do is just equate the two charges. So the charge stored in the equivalent capacitor is CEQ into VI and the charge stored in the gate to drain capacitor is an amplified version of the input voltage times CGD. So the equivalent capacitor CEQ is simply CGD into 1 plus GMRL. So which is nothing but an amplified version of the gate to drain capacitor. That should make intuitive sense because the, the input is going to deliver a charge of a huge charge of 1 plus mod A into VI to CGD into CGD. So it is going to think that there is actually a really large capacitor to which it is supplying this charge. But in reality it is a small capacitor but the voltage across the capacitor is really large so therefore it demands a huge charge from the input source. So but as far as the input is concerned because it has delivered a huge charge it is going to think that it is a large capacitor or it is going to perceive that as a really large capacitor. So this effect of an equivalent 
input capacitor which is a multiplied value i mean where the input voltage source where is it going to see a multiplied or a large value of capacitor at the input is what we call as miller effect now if this voltage source was an ideal voltage source which means with zero source resistance then this input source can easily deliver the charge to the capacitor there isn't really any problem in the circuit so it will behave like a conventional voltage amplifier but the problem arises when the input voltage source has a finite source resistance rs now when you have a finite source resistance then there will be a time constant see of course the voltage source is going to deliver this charge qi eventually to the capacitor the equivalent capacitor or to the common source amplifier but there is going to be a time constant associated with it it's going to take a really large time if the rs value is really large and that can be seen in a frequency domain as a pole at the input node so you can one can directly see that at the input node there is a large capacitor and the source resistance is also really large so it will look like a first order low pass filter and there is a low frequency pole created at the input given by 1 by r is into c equivalent now previously when there was no cgd the amplifier gain was constant over a large range of frequencies but now because of the presence of cgd and miller effect wherein a multiplied value of cgd is going to appear at the input or the gate terminal a low frequency pole is created that in turn reduces the bandwidth of this amplifier so this is the problem of miller effect in uh, common source amplifiers so to just give you an idea if i assume a gain of 1000 a gmrl a factor of 1000 even a 10 femtofarad capacitance between the gate to drain terminal can appear as a 10 picofarad capacitor at the gate terminal so how do we fix this how do we fix this problem of bandwidth reduction so we said the main problem of bandwidth bandwidth reduction is because of this miller multiplication so then we can, we can, we might as well pick uh, an amplifier configuration where there is no miller multiplication so then the obvious choice will be a common gate amplifier a common gate amplifier doesn't have any capacitor between the input and the output terminals or there is no scope for miller multiplication in a common gate amplifier but the problem with a common gate amplifier is its low input impedance so if i want to use a common gate amplifier as a good voltage amplifier then you need to have a voltage source with a very low source resistance rs should be really really small but if rs is really large then the voltage gain of a common source amplifier is given by gmrl by 1 plus gmrs because you know because the input impedance of a common source amplifier is really small a significant portion of the voltage will drop at uh, the the input of the common gate amplifier itself so the total uh, ideally the amplification factor should be gmrl but this 1 by 1 plus gmrs factor appears because of uh, the finite input resistance of a common uh, gate amplifier and the maximum value of gain of a common gate amplifier if i assume the gmrs to be really really greater than much greater than 1 it's going to be rl by rs so the gain depends upon the source resistance if you have a large source resistance that's going to decrease your gain as well so therefore that's not really a good option a common gate amplifier especially if the source resistance is really large then a common gate amplifier is not a preferred ampli amplifier for uh, voltage amplification so then how do we fix this problem so then we actually start with the fundamentals so if you look at a common source amplifier what it essentially does is that it converts the input voltage to a proportional current at the drain terminal and then pushes it into a pushes pushes that current into a load resistor the problem here is that because the voltage at the drain terminal happens to be a huge negative voltage the capacitor cgd sees a large voltage across it if i can somehow isolate the drain terminal to the output terminal where the load is connected then i can in theory solve this problem so if i want to have the same gain the isolator or whatever this block that we have introduced here should transfer the same current from this mosfet to the output node but the output impedance of this isolator should be really large which means it can properly isolate the load resistance from the drain terminal so from a circuit theory point of view that isolator is simply a current buffer 
So we just need to introduce a current buffer which will take this current GMVI fully. So which means the current buffer ideal resistance of a in input impedance of a current buffer is zero. It's going to take in all the current and deliver all the current to the load resistance without absorbing any part of it. So which means the output resistance of the current buffer ideal, ideally it should be infinity. So it takes in all the current which is GMVI and delivers it entirely to the load resistance. So the output voltage across the load resistance is simply going to be minus GMRL into VI which is the same as a common source amplifier. The difference however now is that the drain terminal of the common source amplifier now is that it, it's, the potential is not really changing at all because the, the input impedance of a buffer is zero, the current buffer is zero. So the voltage at the drain terminal is zero volts. Now the voltage to which the capacitor C, CGD should be charged to is just VI itself. So which means as far as the input is concerned, since it's only delivering a charge of CGD times VI now, as opposed to 1 plus GMR into CGD uh, into VI in a common source amplifier, since it's only delivering a small amount of charge which is CGD into VI, it's going to at the, at the input it's going to the equivalent capacitor, uh, it's going to appear as a really small capacitor which is CGD itself. Or I can say the equivalent capacitor seen at the input will just be CGD itself. So now if you see in the circuit, we get the gain that we want which is minus GMR to VI. At the same time, the equivalent capacitance is reduced significantly. All the way from 1 plus GMR into CI is 1 plus GMR into CGD to just CGD itself. So if you look at the frequency response of this new amplifier wherein we have introduced a current buffer in between the common source and the load. So we separated the load from the common source amplifier and we introduced a buffer, a current buffer in between. By doing so, the equivalent capacitance seen at the input just reduces to a much smaller value. And that if you look at it in the frequency response graph, the DC gain is GMR. Previously, because of Miller effect, the pole of the low frequency pole was at 1 by R as into C equivalent, which was a huge value times CGD. Uh, the C equivalent is 1 plus mod A times CGD. So it was at a much lower value. Now, because the equivalent capacitance is reduced by a huge value, the bandwidth now extends significantly. So by inserting a current buffer between the gate, between the common source and the load, we have extended the bandwidth of this amplifier by a huge factor. Now this buffer, current buffer can be very easily realized using a common gate amplifier. A common gate amplifier has all the properties of a current buffer. It has a very low input, input impedance, that is the lowest in, uh, input impedance which is 1 by GM and the output impedance is really high as well. For a common gate amplifier it is at least or not. And the input impedance is 1 by GM. This is the minimum impedance that you can get out of a single MOS device in saturation region. So a common gate amplifier works perfectly as a current buffer. So it takes in a current of GMVI and provides all that current GMVI to the load resistance. Now the drain voltage instead of it being a zero because it is not an ideal current buffer. For an ideal current buffer the input, input impedance was zero so therefore uh, the drain voltage of the common source device was at zero volts. But now it is going to be at minus GMVI times 1 by GM which is minus 1. So it is going to be at minus VI. So now if the capacitor CGD it has to be charged to only 2 VI. So the total uh, charge stored across is, is just 2 VI into CGD. So it is going to demand a much lesser charge as we as compared to a conventional common source amplifier. Or the equivalent capacitance seen at the input will just be equal to 2 times CGD. So seen in the frequency response graph we can see here the pole has now shifted to a much higher frequency which means the bandwidth has now increased. The bandwidth actually increases by a factor of 1 plus GMRL by 2. In fact, in all these analysis, I have I haven't included. There is also one more high frequency pole, but that doesn't really matter now. So 
in this analysis i mean this poll conveys uh, the problem of bandwidth extinction by using a common gate amplifier between the common source and the load resistance so this way of introducing a common gate amplifier between a common source and the load now as far as the load is concerned this new composite amplifier structure the common source common gate cascade is what we call as the cascode configuration now you should understand that the idea of cascode amplification uh, cascode amplifiers was invented way before the invention of bjds and mosfets so in fact it was invented during the times of uh, vacuum tubes so if those interested you can have a look at uh, the evolution of vacuum tubes and how the idea of cascode amplifiers the idea was very similar uh, similarly the vacuum tubes had an input to output capacitor which was seen as an amplified capacitor of the input so cascoding solves that problem so cascode amplifier essentially is like a bandwidth expanding circuit so it extends the bandwidth of a common source amplifier by a huge factor so in the upcoming lectures we'll start discussing this in a more rigorous way uh, now we have made lot of assumptions i'll do the analysis in a more rigorous way for all the single stage and uh, the single stage mos amplifiers and also the cascode amplifier